Welcome to Pregnancy and Postpartum TV. Today we're doing a pregnancy yoga sculpt class. This is day four if you're participating in the pregnancy workout challenge. However, you can do this as a standalone video as well. You don't need any equipment except for a mat or a comfortable floor to get down on. However, I also will use optional dumbbells or you could grab some water bottles to use for some of the poses. We're going to focus on getting rid of pregnancy aches and pains as well as getting baby in the optimal position for birth. At the end, we're also going to practice breathing that you can do while you're pushing. I will keep making pregnancy workouts, yoga, and Pilates every week. If you like videos like these and to support me, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We are going to start standing up so you can come up to a standing position however is comfortable for you. We can take our feet hip width distance apart, spread our toes. Let's start with some gentle neck rolls. We can tilt to the side and bring it around to the other side, stretching out wherever feels good. You can bring your shoulders into it if that feels good. Last one. Good. Let's bring our hands up to our ribs. We're gonna inhale and make sure we're expanding all around, keeping our shoulders low so we're not breathing into our chest. And then exhale, pull your belly and your baby in. Inhale, expanding into your side and back ribs to make room for baby. Exhale, pull it in. Let's do that bringing our hands up, inhale. Exhale, again, inhale, exhale, last time. We're gonna tilt to the side here. We can inhale over, exhale using your obliques, pull yourself back up. Again, inhale, exhale, inhale. Reaching your hands to the top corner, exhale. Do that on the other side. Inhale, reach, exhale, pull yourself back up. Last one, tipping over, exhale, reaching up. Bring your hands down through heart center. If you wanted to grab your weights or your water bottles, you can now, but again, you can just do it without any weights at all. Let's open our feet wide and you can turn your feet to the right. We're gonna move into warrior two. You can lift up your hands, bend your front knee. We'll breathe here. We're gonna tip back into Peaceful Warrior. You can place your back hand on your hip and we'll take our forward hand up. We're gonna do tricep presses here. Last one. And we're gonna leave it down, press your head into your arm and then we can tilt back, looking up for peaceful warrior modification. Breathe here. Beautiful. Exhale, using your obliques to come back up. We're gonna come to side angle and we can take our top hand up five times. Last one, let's hold here for three breaths, engaging your core, pressing the back edge of your back foot into the mat, spreading your feet wide, rolling your shoulders down your back. Beautiful. Let's come on up on our exhale. Warrior two, 
straighten your leg. We'll bend again. We'll do that sequence again, just a little bit faster this time. Moving into tricep presses. Last one, bend it, press your head into your arm, and then tilt over, keeping your ribs pulled in. You're not flaring them out. Exhale, come on up, transitioning into side angle. Hips are facing towards the front of the room. Knee is pressing back behind you, lifting five times. Hold, breathe. Good, exhale. Moving through warrior two, straightening your leg. Let's switch our feet around to the other side. Spreading your toes, find your positioning, bending into warrior two. Breathe in here. Beautiful. Setting up for tricep presses, lifting your arm up five times. Last one, bend, press your head into your arm and then gently tip back, creating space between your ribs Legs are strong. Exhale, coming up, shifting into side angle pose, lifting five times. Core is strong, pulling your baby in, hold here. Moving back into warrior two, exhale. Shifting back, straightening your front leg and doing that sequence again. Bend, moving into tricep presses. Last one, good, bend. Modification of Peaceful Warrior. Exhale, come on up. Moving into side angle. Lifting your arm five times. Last one, hold. Tucking your chin, lots of length in the back of your neck. Beautiful. Exhale. Warrior two. Straighten your front leg. We can bring our stance in just a little bit. We're going to move into goddess pose. Releasing your arms out just a little bit higher than your shoulders. We will bend bringing your scapula in behind you, reaching out. Last one. Good. Let's come down into our sumo squat here. You can bring your hands to your knees Let's just stretch out. You can press into your knees. If it feels good, you can drop one shoulder in.
come on up. You can turn to your right, stepping to the top of your mat, and then we'll take a big step back for warrior one legs. So you're pressing the back edge of your back foot down into the ground. We can bring our hands up. We're gonna do five presses here, or if you have high blood pressure, you're just gonna hold right here. Keeping your core engaged, baby pulled into your spine. Last one. We can straighten our front leg slightly, bring our back foot in a little bit. Let's bring our hands down to our hips. We're gonna move into pyramid pose, keeping length and spine, tilt forward, engaging your legs. They're drawing towards each other. Let's release our hands forward and we will row here, bringing our hands or our weight towards the bottom of our ribs. Good, we can bring our hands back up to our hips. We're gonna bend our front leg, moving into a warrior three pose, shifting your weight forward. You can either keep your toe on the ground here, or if you feel, you can lift it off here. Let's take our hands forward and reverse fly out to the side, five here. Last one, good, stepping back. Let's turn around to the other side. We step to the top of the mat, take a big step back. Warrior one feet, find your positioning, bringing your hands up, engaging your core, making sure you're not swaying through your low back, press. one here beautiful let's bring our back foot in slightly lengthen through your spine tipping forward engaging your legs spreading your toes you can bring your hands forward and five rows here feel your scapula moving together as you bring your arms up Last one. You can bring your hands back up to your hips again, bending your front leg, shifting your weight forward. You can keep your toe on the ground here or play around with lifting it off. Bringing our hands out to the side. We'll do five reverse fly. If your toe is on the ground, that's totally okay. Last one, good. Stepping back into your warrior position and then we can step together. We're gonna place our weights down now. From here, we're going to, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna move into dancer pose. So shifting your weight to one foot, you can grab the other ankle opposite arm goes towards the front corner of the room knees reaching down towards the ground and if it feels good you can tip forward here keeping your ribs pulled in this isn't a back bend you might have some flexibility through your psoas at the front of your hip you can press your back foot into your hand continue to breathe Beautiful. Coming back, let's swing this leg through and we can grab our knee and then with control, open it up towards the side. If it's available to you, you can grab your big toe, but that's a more advanced posture.
dropping your hip of your leg that you're holding your knee. Good. Bringing your knee back in front of you. You can release down to the ground. Good. We can roll our ankle, shake it out. Before we switch to the other side. Setting up on the other side, spreading your toes, finding your balance, grabbing your other ankle, standing tall, pulling your baby in, and then reaching your opposite hand up, gently tilting forward. Ribs are pulling down and in to protect your core. Your next inhale coming up, grabbing your knee. Once you've found your balance here, opening up to the side. Continue to breathe. Inhale, bring your knee front, releasing down. Let's shake it out again. We're gonna come it down into yogi squat. You can bring your feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart, bring your hands to heart center, and then you can shoot your hips back and down. If your heels come off, that's okay. You can also sit on a stool or a couple of yoga blocks if that's more comfortable. Opening up through your hip. Feels good, you can shift back and forth. We also have the options here to do some pelvic floor contractions, but if you have a tight pelvic floor or if you're nearing the end of your pregnancy, you may just wanna focus on relaxing and opening because during the labor and birth process, your pelvic floor muscles will simply have to move aside, but you'll want them to be strong for the recovery process after. So you can relax here, or we can imagine a blueberry, the opening our vagina, pick it up, lift, hold, Five, four, three, two, one. Release with control. Take a breath here, fully relaxed. And you can repeat that twice more with your own breath. released if you're in a contraction. Let's move forward and have a sip of water. And then we're gonna get down on our side for a modified plank position. So let's carefully lower ourselves down on our side. We can prop ourselves up onto our forearm, pressing into our elbow and forearm. You can line your knees up there. So the first modification is to press up beyond your knee there. If it's available to you and you can reach your top foot over, you can also extend your bottom leg and press up here. Let's do some dips using your core. Exhale, lifting up through your side body. Last one, lift, hold, continue to breathe. Good. 
good. Release all the way down. You can roll over and do the other side. I'm gonna flip over this way so you can see me. Lowering down safely, pressing your forearm into the ground, lining up your elbow and your knee. And then you can lift up with your bottom knee bent or bring your top foot across, extending and flexing your bottom foot, pressing up here. Preparing for dips. We'll do five here. Last one, lift through your side body, hold. Pulling your core in. Good, release all the way down. Take a breath here. Let's come on to all fours. Bring your knees wide apart. We'll walk our hands forward in into child's pose, stretching through your back. Deep breaths into your back ribs. Walking your hands in again. You can do a few cat and cow here. Coming back to a neutral spine, making sure that your low back isn't swaying here. Lightly press into it. You'll have to engage your core, pull your baby in. We want to pretend that there is a water glass on our lower back here. We're gonna move into bird dog and we're not going to let that water glass spill. So we're gonna keep our spine very stable. Engaging your core, exhale, lift opposite hand and leg. Come down carefully, switch to the other side. If you're keeping your spine very stable, it's quite a challenging core workout. Switching sides, exhale as you lift. Last one on this side. Let's walk our hands in, come up to a kneeling position. Let's release through our chest and our shoulders. You can place your hands on your lower back. Lift up, keeping your core pulled in, opening up through your chest. You can press your hands down, finding length in your spine. Exhale. Engage your core, come back up again. Let's bring one foot forward for a kneeling lunge, shifting your hips forward. You can slightly tuck your tailbone under. This is great for getting baby in a good position. Pressing into your front foot. Let's shift our hips back, switching to the other side. And shifting your hips forward, tucking your pelvis, releasing into the stretch. breath here, shifting out of the pose. We can come down to a seated position. You can bring your right leg forward, tucking your left foot in, squaring your hips towards your front leg, almost as if your sternum can go towards your front leg. Inhale up, 
and then tilting, keeping length in your spine, reach forward, and then you can drop your hands wherever is comfortable for you. Slight tuck in your chin to find length in the back of your neck. Relax your shoulders, relax your face. Inhale, coming up. Let's open up for a wide-legged forward fold. Feet are flexed, knee and toes are facing up towards the ceiling. Give yourself a little bit of a boost. Continue to breathe here. If it feels good, you can fold forward or you can keep it sitting high. It might depend on how big your belly is at this stage. If it feels good, you can move side to side. One more big breath here. Let's move into Janu Shishasana on the other side, tucking your right foot in now, squaring your hips towards your left foot. Inhale up, tilting forward, keeping length in your spine. Beautiful, come on up. Let's bring our feet together for butterfly or baddha konasana. Let them flop open, sitting tall. And again, you can stay sitting here, especially if your belly's big, or you can lean forward if that feels good to you. Inhale, come on up. Now we're gonna move into a position that we ideally want to push out our baby in. So the two positions that have the lowest risk of tearing are hands and knees or a side line. So these are some of my favorite positions to move into, but if you have another position you wanna practice in, you can as well. And we're not actually going to push with our pelvic floor. We're gonna protect it, but we are gonna practice breathing. One of the breaths that we can use to help breathe our baby out and support our body pushing, or we can use the vowel sounds, or we can use that mmm sound. And this is going to assist our body doing the work. So we can take a big breath in and then breathe out. <sighs> Or you could try, ooh, inhale, ooh. So it may feel natural to hold your breath for part of it, but we want to try to avoid holding our breath for the whole 10 seconds or so that you're pushing because that can increase our risk of tearing, but it may sound more guttural. So it may sound inhale, It may come out in breast, but you're still letting some air out, which is protecting your pelvic floor. Another position is side lying position. And you could be up on a peanut ball here or holding your leg or someone could be supporting your leg. And in both positions, we can actually do internal rotation. So once your baby is crowning and you're at the pushing phase, it actually reduces risk of tearing and sort of lets the tissues relax here to let baby out if you're internally rotated. So this is opening up the outlet or the bottom of your pelvis to let baby out as opposed to earlier on in label when you want to open the top of your pelvis and you want to have your knees open, let's say in a squatting position. But once you're at the pushing phase, then you can move in to internal rotation and the peanut ball would be supporting you there to just risk, reduce risk of tearing. Now that we are lying on our side anyways, we can move in to Shavasana or relaxation. If you wanted to get comfortable, grab blankets or pillows or whatever you need to, to be comfortable here. 
You want to fully relax your body and scan your body from your toes to your head, relaxing each muscle. This is also a great practice for when you are in labor. Sometimes you're moving throughout your labor and sometimes you're gonna be resting and letting your body do the work. With all three of my labors, my labor actually progressed the most when I was resting and letting my body open and do the work. You can place your hand on your belly, relaxing your feet, your calves, your knees, your thighs, relaxing your pelvic floor, your belly, your chest, and your arms. Relax your face, your jaw, let your teeth separate slightly. You can either continue relaxing here, or you can start to wiggle your fingers and toes, stretch your feet and hands in opposite directions. And then you can press yourself up to a seated position to finish up with me. Namaste to you and namaste to the babies. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're doing the challenge, we are now done day four of the challenge. I will read the pregnancy card for the day. My baby is healthy, happy, and growing perfectly inside me. I am the perfect mother for my baby. Of course, I will keep making pregnancy yoga workouts and Pilates every week. To support me, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I will also link to my free resources in the description box below. I have a complete guide on how to reduce and cope with pain during labor, a pregnancy meal plan that I put together as a registered dietitian, and a pelvic floor guide on how to prepare your pelvic floor for birth and the fastest recovery after.